I have seen the Mario movie three times now. One in RPX, one in Standard, and one in IMAX. I'm not obsessed or addicted to the Mario mushrooms or the movie like it's a drug. You know, just one more showing and I'm off the stuff for good. Just one, then I'm off the stuff for good. But I want to go into more detail about the movie, about the stuff I disliked and the stuff that I really love. So let's start with the stuff I disliked. Mamma mia! Luigi is my favorite character in the franchise. Brother Luigi now to tell you a whole heap of a spaghetti pile of information. Hello Mario. Hello, I'm Luigi and I'm here- Charlie Day gives an excellent vocal performance as Luigi, but he feels sidelined. But it's easy to understand how the writers wrote themselves in a corner. Luigi gets separated from Mario, he gets captured by Shy Guys, but we get a heartwarming scene as the brothers as babies. As Mario defends Luigi, we then get a scene of Luigi being confronted by Bowser, and then he gets thrown into a cell until Mario rescues him in the final 20 minutes of the movie. I wanted more Luigi, but if there was more of him, it would just be boring scenes of him in the cell. The narrative of Mario never backing down to save his brother does great for his character, and gives strong motivation for him to travel to the Kong army and defeat Bowser's minions, but it hurts the Luigi aspect. What I would have done is have him slowly get braver throughout the movie, maybe talk back to Kamek a little, or maybe somehow find a way out. He does get a redemption moment with the superstar though. I'm happy in the final battle it wasn't just Mario who becomes invincible. I meant to mention this in my spoiler free review, but Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong left a lot to be desired. His voice as him is okay, but I wish he sounded more crankier. His name is Cranky Kong, not mildly annoyed Kong. I would be lying if I didn't find Lumalee to be all that funny, but also I do find him funny. I think out of all the characters, he's the most illumination in terms of writing. On my first viewing, I was annoyed by him, then on my second, I loved it, and then on my third, I was like, eh. It's an on and off thing with each viewing. The end credit scene felt a little underwhelming. We were all expecting it to be Rosalina and Luma, but it was a solid subversion with Yoshi. Yoshi is awesome and adorable, and it would be nice to have him as a main character for the next time. I read somewhere online someone said that if this was a trilogy, the second installment could be Super Mario World, and the finale could be called Super Mario Galaxy. I think that would be fitting. Peach, you're so cool. The music in this movie is astonishing. There's a lot of 80s music to correlate with the fact that Mario was first released in the 80s, but I feel like there was too much of these songs. Holding Out for a Hero is great though during the montage because it's Holding Out for a Hero, which is an amazing song. Then when Mario first enters the Mushroom Kingdom, you get the angelic music of the overworld theme. As someone whose first game was Super Mario 64 on the DS, hearing the song inside the castle walls but as a triumphant melody really brought me back to memories of me as a six year old. There are so many musical cues that cause me to smile hard from ear to ear, from the Luigi Mansion type music when Luigi is in the Darklands, to the Mario Brothers rap, to the flagpole jingle, but no moment made me smile more than when Mario and Donkey Kong are running alongside each other, and it's shot as a platformer. That's when Mario gets the Tanuki power up, the music from Super Mario Brothers 3 plays, and that involuntarily caused me to genuinely start singing alongside the instrumental. Every viewing I have of the movie, I am more impressed by Jack Black. If you haven't already found out, Bowser wants to marry Peach. Jack Black voices Bowser to perfection. He seamlessly goes into being brooding and bad to hopelessly in love with the princess. He's not redeemable whatsoever, and his motivations are hilarious if you've been following the game series since the beginning. His song Peaches is the movie's highlight, and Jack Black gives it his all. Bowser is the best character in the movie, and the legendary Jack Black is responsible for that. It's crazy how funny he can be, and then on the switch of a dime, he is unhinged in the terrifying Bowser from the games. I just love seeing the crazy in his eyes. The animation for the eye on Bowser is really great. When it comes to the final battle, I was curious on how it was going to go. Will it be a homage to 64? Will Bowser just be chilling in soup? How will it go? Well, it did not go how I thought it would, taking place in Brooklyn. Now, I could be wrong, and maybe this has happened before, but this idea seemed totally original to me. It was so satisfying seeing Mario and Luigi both battle Bowser as they take no damage whatsoever. The combos pulled are animated beautifully, and they actually do pull on its tail and call him a gay boy. That was the best part by far. So long, gay Bowser! There's a Diddy Kong cameo. That was awesome, and also we can acknowledge Dixie Kong was also there, but... 
Chunky Kong is there too, but I could have sworn. And then there's Chunky. He's dead. Chunky's dead. Chunky's dead. Mario and Donkey Kong have a great dynamic where they both are at odds, but they like each other at moments. It's fitting because Mario first appeared when Donkey Kong was throwing barrels at him, trying to kill him. Then in the next game, Mario was the villain, and that was the one and only time Mario has been an antagonist in a game. I haven't seen a lot of people mentioning this, but has anyone noticed that despite Mario going after Peach for almost 50 years, they don't end up together by the end of this movie? This was a great subversion, and there were many moments where you can see that chemistry and their romance begin to bloom, but I'm so glad I didn't end with them together so their relationship can grow in the sequels. Speaking of which, I love Peach's character in this. She's a total badass, but they never bash you over the head with it. She shows off how skilled she is because she grew up in the Mushroom Kingdom, but also the movie lets Mario and Luigi save the day while having Peach do her part, and I'm thankful for that in this world we're living in where everything in Hollywood has to be woke. But I'm not a politics guy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. Overall, three times later, the Mario movie is still one of the best video game adaptations I've ever seen. It truly brought me back to when I was a kid with a DS playing new Super Mario Bros. This is a movie that was truly crafted from love from Nintendo.